So, and that's where we have Rabbi Bar- Barclay writing an article, mm-hmm. uh, being very critical of Candace and accusing her for some things. So she, this was before she got fired. She decided to sit down and she's like, well, let's have an honest discussion. Let's fully just go over. Here's what you claim. Let's watch the clip that that's based off of and go through. And the, and it all starts out with her asking what anti-Semitism is. And the first part of that is a, it, it is a discussion about, he spends the first five minutes talking about more the history of like blood libels and the kind of the myths behind Jewish people that were per- perpetrated in kind of the more medieval times and how some of those things fueled hatred towards Jewish people as a group. But mm. he also specifically says that anti-Semitism is a hate that m- mutates. And he's kind of can't really pinpoint a definition. So let, let's just, uh, I want to show this little part here. Pause it. You said it's a hate that mutates. Correct. So your belief then is that the definition of anti-Semitism can necessarily change. Is that correct? It's not just my belief. It is the commonly accepted understanding in both the Jewish and academic worlds. Okay. This isn't, okay. As I said, that's why I quoted, this is a quote. It's a great thing from Lord Sachs, uh, you know, Jonathan Sachs. It's a great thing from Niall Leckett. This, this is just accepted as the understanding of, you know, a cultural okay. anthropologist. So I- I would just say off the bat, I do not accept that definitions can just mutate. That is something that I, mean, I could debate that on. Like the definition of a woman, I mean, and I'm saying not just about Jewish people, I think that we have to have a concrete definition to work with because then you can just update and say, actually, I've changed that and now this is what constitutes Candace, anti-Semitism. But Candace, that is the horror of anti-Semitism. So what you are saying to me is that anti-Semitism is this and mm-hmm. does not change. What I am saying to you is that the entire world and scholars about anti-Semitism recognize that it is a unique hate. That if you define it as the the the, that that Jews should not be able to exist collectively, Mm -hmm. okay, as a collective, they shouldn't have that right. Mm -hmm. That changes from the Middle Ages with religion, the 18th through 20th centuries about race, and then. After Israel is created, it's a hatred based on the nation. And until that until that is understood, that 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 it is, this isn't something that's really questioned about among academics, theologians, Jewish scholars. I, I'm not presenting it. I, this is why I thought I'm so optimistic about a dialogue. But I think part of it is you view that the hate can't mutate. And what I'm trying to tell you is that we have two thousand years of history that demonstrate the exact opposite. So, and I, I'm, I'm going to just push back very, just gently here. For me personally, if I thought that racism could just be an ever-shifting uh, definition based on the experience of Black people, it would be a remarkable power, and I would be able to create something like BLM, which could say that everything was racist. So I am not going to be able to agree that definition should be able to transform according to what's happening during the day. But here's what I will say. If you could, just because I think it's really important um, for us to get to going through this article, because then you might be able So what I would just say for, because I hadn't seen that clip, my initial reaction to that, like regardless of the, of the truth value of the argument that he's making, the way that he's arguing it is not, it's it's suboptimal the way that he's arguing it because sort of rather than defining what he means by why the shifting definition is relevant in this particular type of hate, um, all he really said there was, well, other Jewish scholars agree that this is the case. So that 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 whole kind of segment was really just one big appeal to authority, it felt like, without really much like meat on those bones, you know what I mean? What do you think there? Yeah, he uh, he does refer to the Jewish scholars defining it. And then the only problem with that is, is that a collective worldwide definition or? Yeah. Yeah, that, that's the first issue that you get. Um, the next issue is he 
very much says that he cannot define what racism is like to Candace, who is a black woman, since he is not part of that group. I hate, I hate that. That's that's such a bad argument too. In the same way that Candace cannot cannot define anti-Semitism for herself or cannot because she's not kind of reject yeah, that because she's not that's Jewish. So silly. That's yeah. Is here's that's so the thing. Silly. Is that not like he, this rabbi is a conservative, but is that not the woke playbook in action? This, that's 100%. This, is why, this is why like, this was blowing my mind of like, this felt like a struggle <laughs> session based on yeah. these var- very far left kind of tactics. This this is the this is the 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 pedagogy of the oppressed, right? This is the you can't uh, you can't uh, uh, the the oppressed can never can never uh, you know ascend to the level of the oppressor, and the, like it, that's all it is. It's it's just a reframing of that type of um, woke power struggle dynamics that I'm sure as a conservative he would be against in another context, but he doesn't apply it to his own circumstance. Mm-hmm.